here. Hut, hut. Four downs with Rich. Here we go. Why did you stop? Okay, here's uh, every single Tuesday, even though we still have a game to go. Uh, here's my post week 12 uh, takes on the National Football League, uh, starting with first down here on the Rich Eisen Show. If you give me some NFL films music, please, Jason, that would be wonderful. That would be great. Uh, NFL uh, draft news right now. Uh, the most NFC East 2020, most NFC East 2020 thing, if you will, may be the current draft order for the 2021 NFL draft in the NFC East right now. I know I said the most NFC East thing ever could be Colt McCoy taking the Giants to win the division over Washington football team and the Dallas Cowboys. That would be the most NFC East thing ever. But right now, uh, the leader in the clubhouse, take a look at the uh, draft order in the NFC East for the 2021 draft as we're through 12 weeks of the 2020 National Football League season. You take a look at it right now, and you see at the top of that draft order, your 3-8 and Dallas Cowboys, top five. That you don't normally see. Then you see the sixth overall draft choice is owned by the 3-7-1 and Philadelphia Eagles. Then you've got the eighth overall spot owned by Washington football team at 4-7. and seven. And then same record, same record because they're leading the division and thus would have to be considered a wild card loser all the way down at 19. The New York Giants, very rare. Oof. Do you see such a split with the same four and seven record in the draft order? Four and seven Washington, eighth overall. Four and seven Giants, nineteenth overall. Yikes. Makes you want even want to tank just for the draft position. Yeah, I mean, why win the division? That's the most 2020 NFC East thing I've seen in all of 2020. <laughs> That's funny. Right now. All right, let's go to second down now here. Second down. And let's talk about the uh, the 2021 uh, uh, NFL draft um, at the top. Now, we had Todd McShay on this show, right, Chris? We did. Oh, yeah. Way back. Way back. On what was the date? I think it was September, September 18th. September 18th. Jets had just lost week one. I was irrational. I was totally irrational. <laughs> I brought it up with Todd McShay on that day. What if the Jets... Tank for Trevor. Roll it. If the Jets have a chance at Trevor Lawrence, do you turn Sam Darnold into no. the Josh Rosen of this equation? You don't. You don't really do that. No. Huh. No. 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 I don't. Listen, they're not going to be picking number one. I, I really don't believe that's the case. But in your hypothetical, if they're picking at number one, I think you sit there and you get one of the biggest deals that has ever been brokered for a number one overall pick in the history of the NFL draft. I would argue probably the biggest for Trevor Lawrence. So I, you're going to wind up with so many ones. You're going to wind up with at least two ones, multiple twos, and probably two or three other picks. And you can name your price because there are going to be three or four organizations that are, are bidding against each other to go up and get what I think is a generational talent in, in Trevor Lawrence coming out of Clemson. So now that was a very rational response yes. back then, yes. right? Yes. Back on September 18th, that was a rational response. I was being the Jet fan. Hey, right. Irrational. Of course. Of course. But I was also Nostradamus, Nostragestus, because <laughs> I knew this was possible. Week one. But now it's after week 12. It's appropriate to look at the Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes right now. Very appropriate. And let's just say... Let's just say Todd McShay's take is still right, that the Jets could get a King's Ransom, or whoever is at the top of the list could get a King's Ransom. Let's take a look at the top five draft choices right now. Remarkably, the Jets are still winless. The Jaguars, after that week one, when I was talking to Todd McShay, they had come off their still-to-date only win of the season. Gardner Minshew beating somehow, someway, the Colts. They've lost 10 in a row since then. The Bengals are 2-8-1. and one. We mentioned how the Cowboys are sitting right there, right? And the Chargers, 3-8, and eight, and Eagles at 3-7-1, and one, right? Okay. So you tell me, which one of those teams would get the King's Ransom? The Bengals, the Cowboys, and the Chargers, and presumably the Eagles would trade away that pick right now for the King's Ransom. Jets and Jaguars sure would not. And who's going to catch either one of those two teams right now? Maybe the Bengals? Is it possible that the Bengals finish 2-13-1 and one, and the Jets finish 3-13, and 13, win three of their remaining games, and Jacksonville wins two of their remaining games? Nuh-uh. The Cowboys win against the Minnesota Vikings. 
actually took them out of the running right here. Yeah. It's a Jets-Jacksonville race, people, and there is no King's Ransom. Nuh-uh. And if there is somebody who does want to pay the King's Ransom, they're going to have to come from so far down. They're going to have to trade with one of those teams that's currently three, four, five, and 6 to get that close to maybe trade up. I don't, I mean, the, I, I don't even think it'll be a King's Ransom. It's going to have to be the biggest haul ever to try and get the Jets or Jaguars off of this pick. And Jets, I'm telling you, you've come this far. Finish the job. What about Washington? What about one of those four and seven teams? But four and seven, you still have to be as bad as the Jets. Jets, are the Jets going to finish no, four and one? No, I mean to trade up and give the, give up the It's ransom. possible, but you, you're you coming from far down. Washington, Detroit, Six, seven? Atlanta? That's far down. To go up to one for the ultimate one? Maybe in the history of ones? Like McShay said, it might take six or seven picks. Oh, boy. Third down right here on the Third Detroit down. Show. We hit this with Mina Kimes moments ago, and I'll just hit this briefly here um, because it, it, not much really needs to be said right here. NFC so wide open. Literally, you tell me who can't beat who here. <laughs> you tell me who can't beat who here. The Giants maybe, you know, can't beat everybody here. I don't think the Bears can really beat right. anybody. Vikings, but a Cardinals could beat anybody. Bucks, you heard Jaws say, you know, they're going to get it together. Rams, one week, next week. Saints can beat anybody. Seahawks can beat anybody. Packers could beat anybody. Giant, Giants and Bears, not really. That's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Anyone could truly beat anyone in the NFC right now, including the team that's currently sniffing it in my fourth down. Oh, because that was last week's uh, hot take that you said the 49ers not dead yet. I said the 49ers not dead yet in my fourth down last week, and I'm about to upgrade it. So we're doubling down on last doubling week. Doubling down on oh, last week, even though they are going to be away from home in Arizona, home away from home. We saw what they did, and I oh. understand. <laughs> I understand their next two opponents, the home away from home in Arizona, in Buffalo, and then Washington are currently division leaders. We're tied for division lead right now. It's not the Jets and the Giants. They already went to West Virginia and stayed away from, way away from home and had an excellent week bonding, getting it together, getting healthy. I saw what they looked like last week. I see what this coach is dialing up. Robert Sala is going to be gone. We all know that. And he's going to be dialing it up. I mean, he's a, he's got a job. He's got job interviews every single week. The 49ers will make the playoffs. They will be at least the seventh seed. <laughs> That's my fourth down hot take. Oh, that is. I am all in. Super hot. Fired I know it's hot. That's why I'm clutching the hot take plank. I'm upgrading instead of like they're not dead yet. I'm saying they're. I'm calling my they're shot. In. That thing is smoking right now. I, I count them out. Count them out. Oh, they're they're away from home. This is exactly when teams like that are like it's us against the world. You know. Now, you say that knowing Jimmy G's not playing, right? I know. Okay. Nick Mullins just beat the Rams. Nick Mullins did something Tom Brady couldn't do. I'm serious. That just happened. Tom Brady. How many wins against the Rams do you have this year? Zero. How about Nick Mullins? One. One. Jimmy G, one. Wow. And the 49ers have that tie break if they could catch the Rams. Mm. I'm saying that's my fourth down. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.